so SmackDown Monday Night was the previous SmackDown pay-per-views, where I was to go home triple fast and so I obviously have no other right to do this crap. But now I do. I like doing this now. This is fun for me. The other way, this fucking show was all right, I guess. I mean, it has some good wrestling, but no build-up. Andrade and Rey Mysterio going at a fast lane, so that fatal four-way was pointless. There was not even a promo for that much of fast lane for the SmackDown brand. Thanks, it was just going to be Ray, uh, Daniel Bryan facing Kevin Owens either way, because you really want to see Kofi Kingston doing this crap. No disrespect, but I'm obviously not wasting a pay-per-view, so I can see Kofi Kingston match up against Daniel Bryan for the world title on pay-per-view. And there's not that much of an underdog feel. Well, Daniel Bryan used to be an underdog, and I thought he would be more compelling on paper on his promo while showing the vignette of Kofi Kingston's career and what happened the week prior with him getting screwed over for the world title opportunity back in the contract signing. And Daniel Bryan not saying anything until he says everybody has to shut up. Then Kevin Owens came out, made his own speech on on throwing the WWE title to the trash. How oh, you're belittling the people, babyface crap, like babyface crap. Well, he used to be a heel and belittle people and do all that ironic crap. I thought Daniel Bryan would bring that up, but we're not going to have an intelligent conversation against two heels. We're having an intelligent conversation against two a babyface and a heel. Except it's Kevin Owens is the baby face while Daniel Bryan's is the heel. Now keep up with me if you really want to understand that. And it came with Kevin Owens coming into the ring. I thought when he said that there's a seven footer with him and there's not a nobody with you because you have no friends. I thought they, Sammy Zayn was gonna come out, but no. Kevin Owens just came, hit somebody with a stunner. I mean, uh, Kevin Owens just got choke slam and crap like that. Then Mustafa Ali came, where he didn't get a match. So that was awesome. It was Usos coming up for a promise and making fun of white people and saying that uh, Shane got a better shoe game than him. It was it was a decent promo of the lack of chemistry, how they can't take him seriously, and they are the best tag team. You can say you're the best tag team. You still lost your tag titles in your first title defense. Where Miz picked up the clean W against J Jay Uso by assistance coming from Sheen on a one on one match. It's a few decent moves. They went a commercial a lot. This one match should have been taking at least five minutes or ten. This this was no need for a big ass waste of waste of space. Just doing this cliche now in WWE. Because during a tag team match feud, one of the partners have to go at it. There's not even that much of build-up. It's been two weeks of build-up after what happened back at the Elimination Chamber. And they just automatically get to rematch Claw so we can build up sympathy for The Miz. And have a reason for Shane, uh, for Miz to turn on him. Next up was the US Title Open Challenge. And then Lacey Evans came out of nowhere just to make her little waltz around the ring after uh, R-Truth. That's just the retarded Negro, Negro again. Just coming out of nowhere just saying, damn, he did this every week and shit like that. They're, they, it's been years, man. I feel bad for R-Truth. Oh, he's got to be so stupid and how this is signed to him to get a cheap pop from the fans and he loses the title after getting not getting pinned for the U.S. title match, and they don't make a storyline out of that. It was good to see Samoa Joe again finally given an opportunity after not doing much last year, except with that stupid feud with AJ Styles. But it was good to see Samoa Joe like actually acting like a hateable cunt until finally winning his his first championship, his U.S. title win against pinning Andrade, now from the Rey Mysterio. Yes, Andrade and Rey Mysterio came. It's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one open challenge, but they moved it into a fatal four-way because Rey Mysterio and Andrade came to the ring and they're feuding. They, this makes no sense. This was an alright match. We, 
Of course they can't put Lucha Libre in the main card. It's going to be in the fucking kickoff when they have no nothing to build up. They have nothing to build up and they can't squeeze in the time to make a reasonable timed Lucha Libre match against two of the top guys that wrestle in Lucha Libre. Don't you want to see don't you want to make fans watch that? You want to make it as pinnacle to the cruiserweights that always have kickoff? Whatever. Damn, it just came to Lacey Evans that still does nothing. And where the hell is Nikki Cross and EC3 over all of this? Where is Sanity? Where is a majority of what happened? What happened to the SmackDown roster? It's still got to be Aleister Black, Ricochet, Your Truth, Nakamura. And Rusev, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Where's the roster? And then Randy Orton, when AJ Styles came in backstage, he still didn't do anything. He still doesn't compete, though, because you can't let him compete against a mid Carter if you want to build up uh, something with Randy Orton and AJ Styles. Really, you can't build something like that up. And he's like, no wonder you came here 15 years. You want to g- elaborate on that? I have a back... Why don't you want to have Randy Orton's thoughts after interrupting him the last week? No interest. No conflict. No nothing. This is why I have issues with WWE. You have so much potential, but you lack using it. It was a decent Fatal 4-Way. And then it was Aleister Black and Ricochet versus a bar in a decent match where we've seen this before and they pinned them before. So what was the point of this? Make SmackDown and Raw have the shittiest tag division they had in years. It was good to see Matt Hardy looking good since, like, the last time we seen him with the delete shit. He has the wet hair again with the pants, with the cargo pants, and the goddamn Jeff Hardy still with the face painting crap like that. So it was good to see these guys looking like they're in good shape. Well, I don't, I don't know, maybe kick off they're going to see the Hardy Boys and bars in the bar fight. It's literally it with Ricochet and Aleister Black. And I'm already a triple threat tag match. So, eh. Post match assault. This was alright. I don't care what happened. I don't care. I don't care. They already have something built up for Raw, and obviously they have more screen time in Raw, so that doesn't make sense to me. They had Amanda Rose versus <clears throat> Naomi. So, Asuka already has to defend her title against Amanda Rose. So, what happened with Lacey Evans a few weeks ago when she distracted her with Amanda Rose pinning Asuka clean after her return match? So, we obviously don't care about Asuka. And I discussed this before with a friend of mine, and he's like, Well, well WWE isn't ready for Asuka. No. No. Listen, there's a lot of people WWE fucked up on, but Asuka is a lost cause. She's a butchering English, non-interesting, ununique, try-hard pro wrestler that can't get anywhere in this current company. As much as people want to disagree with the booking decisions and maybe the business decisions with McMahon, he's a millionaire for a reason. He makes ideas that obviously cost some guys, some top guys to be the most successful they've been in years. And make sure they have remembering names in the company. Don't discredit McMahon because of his poor booking decisions in the past. There's a reason why he's a millionaire. There's a reason why the WWE still exists. And there's a reason why these guys are still making a name for themselves. And some people can't get over. And that isn't McMahon's fault. Asuka might lose the the women's title in Fastlane. It's been since the Royal Rumble since she defended the women's title against Becky Lynch. So obviously... They're going to give the belt to some woman that obviously looks more charismatic and looks like she can hold the women's title with Sonya Deville. I'm, jo- I'm joking. It's going to be uh, Mandy Rose, so then she's going to defend her women's title. With Naomi getting pinned clean. You know, your former SmackDown Women's Champion a few years back. Next up, we had Kevin Owens versus Rowan. As the main event of the match, with of course Mustafa Ali coming back after Daniel Bryan trying to assault, but he took a running knee to the face from the apron. It was a shitty long match with Rowan and 
Kevin Owens with very little build up, but it was build up at least for a match that no one cares about. And Mustafa Ali coming back, even though it was supposed to be Mustafa Ali instead of Kobe Kingston. Kobe Kingston was literally there taking the place of Mustafa Ali, and people don't get it. It's an injury. Kofi Kingston was a lost cause. Plus, they were going on tour, so what was the point of that? I thought this would make a major heel turn for Kofi, and he assaults Kevin and stuff like that. But no, they don't want to do stuff like that. So yeah, it will be Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan come fast lane. Whatever it's going to happen, it might be by DQ, and we still might see Daniel Bryan as world champion. Next up is... Uh, the final build to Becky Lynch and Charlotte come fast lane, and then Becky Lynch got the disarmor on her with when obviously fat, uh, Flair was trying to take advantage and try to beat down her leg, and then she still had the crutch beating the ever living shit out of her while she was down. She had to higher ground in this occasion, and then got the disarmor on her until the SmackDown ended. Speaking about it, uh, just poor Oscar. Should have lost the belt. She's obviously not given anything. After her winning streak and her winning the women's title, she's become completely irrelevant at this case. The mid car need work. The mid car needs work. A lot of work done. They have no build up. They have no stars currently. Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Nakamura, Rusev should be battling right now for the U.S. title right now. The tag division needs work. Why is Rusev and Nakamura from a hot feud? Involving Lana getting hurt, and obviously something so personal, and they would fuck it up just to let them tag for a bit, all because of the NXT newcomers. Why is Asuka getting no screen time? Your women's champion doesn't even have an interview, and she just comes assaulting Mandy Rose just to build up a pay-per-view match two weeks in the making after Asuka's return from injury. And Miz and Shane, the most rushed tag team, and you give them a tag title reign that only lasted only a, a few weeks. Just to, you know, discredit a great tag team like the Usos, when you should obviously unify the belts so you can have a more diverse tag division. And fucking Rey Mysterio and Andrade has no buildup. At all. It has no promos. No reasoning why these guys should feud. Except these guys are both luchadors. I was suspecting a lot more coming out of the SmackDown. This gets a 3 out of 10. This was a bad SmackDown. I tried my hardest to try to tolerate it. But I was about to go to sleep. As soon as I heard that Kevin Owens will be fighting Eric Rowan. With no stipulation. Why? Why don't you want an exciting SmackDown? Why don't you want to show some exciting stipulation? Why don't you want to make it difficult for Kevin Owens to actually go to Fastlane? Daniel Bryan's a heel. Where's the authority figures? Oh, wait, Shane was the fuck out with the Miz. What happened to McMahon? Where is Stephanie? What the fuck is going on here? This had no rhyme and reasoning except their feud. Let them continue. The fuck out of here, man. Make a show that actually makes some coherent sense. Then talk to me. Because obviously... SmackDown obviously didn't give a crap. It was just a post-recap for Raw like it's always been for the last 10 years. What, what happened, guys? What happened? I, I, I'm on, it's good to see Samoa Joe as US champion. That was the only positive of the damn show. And Becky Lynch, a little disarmor shit. But nothing else was entertaining. They didn't even build up much with AJ Styles and, the, and Randy Orton, so obviously I wasted my time. So, no build-up for bigger feuds. Fastlane's a complete waste of space, and I can't wait to rant about this come my review. Thanks for watching, everybody.